And a very good morning to you. It's all oh, sound off. It's Saturday, the 2nd of November 2013. Hello! On this 1st November day with us, and of course, being as it's a new month, we have a new Barry Manilow picture behind us. Oh, yes. The November picture from my 2013 Barry Manilow calendar is now up, proudly displayed on the wall for all to see, boys and girls. Yes, he is. And in this particular picture, he says, carefully looking, he's wearing like a, uh, a, 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 like a silver jacket, shimmering in the various multicoloured lights when he stands on that big stage of his. We love it. I must admit, you know, I do hope that one day I may play at large venues like Barry Manilow, perhaps doing little bits of talk like on this show, also hosting my karaoke nights and playing a little bit of music for people to dance to. Will it ever happen? My sister says I'm living in a dream world. Do you think that's true? Or is it a possibility? Do we all need a dream of some sort? I think Terry H needs some sort of dream, didn't you, Terry? Good morning, Terry H, up in Leeds. He's with us this morning. Morning, Terry. What is your dream, boys and girls? Do you have a dream? It can be as ordinary as uh, working, perhaps, in a restaurant. You know, some people do possibly mundane jobs that you or I wouldn't dream of wanting to do, but they absolutely love it. I met a bus driver once who absolutely loved his job. He loved it. Didn't want to do anything else from the day he started the job until the, you know, until he retires. Still over happy. I was in Australia once in uh, Melbourne, and in Melbourne they have a lot of trams ferrying people around. And I got talking to the bloke who was, kind of, as I say driving the tram, you know, they don't, they didn't have a steering wheel because they got r rails, but they kind of stop it and they start it. Do you know what I mean? And he was about, I would say he was about 50, 50, 55, 58, something like that. And I got talking to him, as I often do, you know, I, I can be in public places anywhere and just start talking to people. Often, you know, they try and walk away, but I just follow them. I just follow them and I carry on talking, boys and girls. It's not like on here, you know. It's not like on here. When you get, you know, really fed up with me chatting, you just click the stop button. And let's be honest, a lot of people do that. You know, after the first couple of minutes, I do notice the figures suddenly drop down to nothing. But that's okay. You know, because I can pretend to myself that you're actually there. Anyway, so this <laughs> this bloke on the um on the tram, and he was telling me, you know, he he's done the job for years. He he finished paying for his house a number of years ago, and all the money he earns from the trams, he goes on holidays and spends it on his children and all that. And he absolutely loves his job. Now, what job would you like? If you could do any job in the world, what do you find you doing? Tell me. Now you can tell us either on an email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, or you can tell us if you are with us live right now. How do you know you're with us live? Have a quick look at your clock. If it's just coming up to five past 12 in the afternoon, UK time, that's GMT. We're back on GMT now. Then you can join in live. Is it Saturday the 2nd of November where you are right now? Is it five past 12 GMT, British time? If it is, then you are indeed with us live. And you can join in live by two methods, three methods. As I say, by email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. We have Skype. You can Skype a message or indeed Skype in a phone call. 
My Skype username is Chris Reardon, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon is my Skype username, OK? Or by good old-fashioned telephone. We have a local London number, boys and girls. It's not premium rate. Local number is 020 6358 All right? 8133 Terry H says one of his um, what, a job he'd like to do is meet Cristiano Ronaldo not before me Terry I, I sit here with my special red phone waiting for Cristiano to ring and ask for a date I will be there I hope he flies me out first class I'm not going in no economy planes, thank you. What job would you like to do? Let me know. I've got email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, phone call, 20 8133 Or Skype, username Chris Reardon. All one word, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Uh, got to say, good morning, Orchid, sneeze. I want to sneeze. No tissues, great. No tissues at all? Oh, I'll have to get one. Just a sec. Can you hang on a second? I've got a spider here looking for you as well. One minute. Back in the Have a look, a look at the Barry Manilow picture while I'm away. <coughs> Back. Oh, dear. Excuse me. My best... My best mate, Ron, he says I blow my nose very noisily. You know, what's it to do with him? Mind your own bloody business. <laughs> oh, dear. That's better. Always seems to get a bit of a sneeze while I'm doing this show. Yes, uh, a little spider I picked up this week from one of the venues. Um, I'm a DJ. I do karaoke nights, DJing and quiz nights. And uh, Halloween, all the... All the bars and that, they do up the places with, um, you know, various insects crawling on the wall and spider's web. And I managed to pick up, while I were chucking them all out, this rather good-looking spider. Isn't that fantastic? And I think that looks quite realistic. And me and my best mate, Rom, I often like to scare him. And I think I'm going to place this spider... In the corner of his living room one day when I go round. Oh, you can squeeze this one. Hang on a minute. Maybe you can squeeze poison out the end, can you? This is a great big spoiler. Those of you just listening, it's a great big black spider. Possibly looking like the false black widow. Here, maybe I should paint. That, it's got like a, a Scott. Maybe I could get a yellow felt pit, felt tip and paint the, um, the markings of the... Uh, of the false Black Widow spider on there. I just put that in the corner of his room when I go around there one day. <laughs> and I'll just wait. I won't say a thing and see how long it takes him to notice it. What a shame he hasn't got an electric motor in and you can, you know, move the legs or something like that. Are you a spider fan? I, I don't mind them. I must admit, I didn't really mind them until we started getting the stories here in the UK of the false black spiders. Oh, we got a phone call. Just a second. Hello. Good morning. Who's on the line? It's Mary. Um, Good morning, Mary. I was going to ring you before the show today yeah. and um, run out. I'm just looking at you with the spider. Is that wise? You no, like us? I think you could apply it to the top of your head, darling. What, what are you saying? Are you saying that, that my hair's disappearing? Well, you know, you, you do have slightly more than me, but, you know. <laughs> oh, that, do you know that looks quite good? Spider yeah. on the top of my head, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, it won't stay. Oh, hang on a minute, it's a bit of elastic. One second, I'll put the elastic on. Stay down, hang on a minute. <laughs> like a hat, wouldn't it? Yeah. Fancy Does that work? Like that. Hang on a minute. It, it, the elastic kind of pulls it round one way, Mary. Yeah, but, you know, you can zip us. I'm starting to look like Victoria Beckham when she wears those stupid hats. 
Oh, no. <laughs> well, at least he's not, uh, what's her name, Princess Beatrice. I like. Oh, yeah, Princess Beatrice. She's the one, isn't she? Yeah, she, she wears has those... the, the sky receiver on her head or whatever <laughs> yeah, it was. She wears those dodgy hats on her head. I can't, I can't get this on. Hang on a minute, Mary. Uh, where's the blooming... Oh, I see. Oh, no, the problem is the elastic's on the top of the spider. If I just wrap that round... Oh, that's fabulous. If I just wrap this round... <laughs> How's your treatment going, ladies? Mary's on the on the on some of the uh, cancer treatment at the moment. She's on yeah, a chemo. Yeah, I had um, chemo number four yesterday, so um, I've just got another six weeks of the bad stuff right. to go, and then <laughs> I said, maybe I'll borrow the spider off you. Yeah. That's it. It works. I like it. You, I don't. You can't see this at the moment now, can you? While you're chatting to me. No, I. Oh, yes, you can. You're on the phone, aren't you? You're not on the Skype. Are yeah, you? but um, uh, Halloween. Yeah. Um, I wore a long black lace dress. Oh yes. With um a horse's head mask. Uh, you're not starting to do those dodgy porn films again, where they get you to dress up in oh things, are you? Oh my God. That's disgusting. Is that what it is? Oh no, there's some very funny people around, my, um, um, Mary. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yes. My, but, my, um, my, I don't think I'll have much trouble with trick-or-treaters next year. Well, you don't know. Oh, I saw so a... I opened the door and there's yep. all these little kiddies there and I've got a horse's head on with this long black witchy dress <laughs> and they're going, trick or treat trick or treat And I said, right, there's your treat. Do you want to see my trick? And I pull up the horse's <laughs> head and I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a story in the paper. Um, let me see if I can just find this um uh halloween mm, let's see if have i got this yeah here it is here it is i knew i'd find this again are you ready oh this is awful this is now you know the kids you know they come round to the houses you know knocking this is just a little bit of fun and i don't think many of them throw eggs at your door and that no. sort of thing it doesn't really happen anyway in uh, the paper yesterday, uh, last night, I was at work, you know, scouring through the papers. Um, a group of trick-or-treating youngsters knocked on a door and were handed a lamb's heart. Oh, that is just plain wrong. By a woman in a blooded butcher's apron, brandishing oh. a fake knife, who chased them down the street. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Yeah, listen, the four children aged between 9 and 12, were knocking on neighbours' doors in Orpington. In Orpington, dear. Kent! Kent! That's wrong. It's I wrong mean, anywhere. You expect it in Camden, dear. You know, you would expect it in Camden Town, that well, sort of thing. not really. I say, I, say, <laughs> I say lamb's hearts. If you be handed a human heart if you knocked on some of the doors down there, dear. You would! The uh, woman who had well, said... I, I actually, um, many years ago, when I was doing my <laughs> science degree... Yeah. Um, my father had been ill and had had a quadruple bypass. Right. Um, but on your first year of biology at my university, one of the practical exams would be to dissect a sheep's heart or the mouth parts of a locust. Mm. And I actually, when, when we were in the lab doing it beforehand, you know, yes. in class, um, I passed out because, to me, because my father was in hospital, the, the, the heart appeared to pulse in front of me. Oh, <laughs> my yeah, passed, God, are you joking? No, but I got. I had to get a doctor's letter for the exam to say I was unable to dissect a sheep's heart for psychological reasons. Oh, pulsing in front of you? It, yeah, it, 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 that's what it seemed like to me. It's just like... Ugh. And even now, I can never... And um, look at those things. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean, I think, I think I remember doing it at school with a rat. And oh, I was just no. horrified at the whole thing. I just, I mean, did I do it? I think I did it, but I was just horrified by the whole thing. And that's probably why you're a veggie now. Oh, vegetarian, yes. Yeah, yeah do you know what I made yesterday? No. Vegetarian chilli in the slow cooker. Uh-huh. Second time I've done that. Yeah, and oh. it's, um, oh, it's easy, you know, you just... You just put it all in when you get in from work, like three o'clock in the morning, and um, twelve o'clock the next afternoon, it's done. Wonderful. Yeah, but 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 I don't get slow cooking of vegetables. Go on. I just don't get it. Well, you, you, do, you the thing, slow thing cook is, slow cooker for cheaper cuts of meat, 
so well, blah, 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 blah. I, I think a lot of it's ease as well you know because you go in you chuck it all in you go to bed there's no stirring involved no yeah. watching nothing like that i, I mean i get up around about i still get up about nine half past nine in the morning even when i go to bed at four um but i did and, and yeah. i get up oh there you are i, I get up and i do give it I, I then take the lid off and i give it a stir and then leave it again for another four hours before lunchtime but the thing the point is you don't have to do anything to it no yeah. watching you know all well, 10 minutes is up rushing over none of that you just do it but you need your herbs and your spices in there. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, don't start me off on food again. Oh. Why? Today we are having a Spanish tortilla for lunch. Hola! 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 Hola. Can you speak any Spanish? Well, I'm doing Spanish lessons now. Oh, give me some nice Spanish words. Uh, I won't do live on air. Oh, go on, Mary. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no, no, no. I just, I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. And the teacher's kind of easy on the eye as well. Oh, really? Yes, and he comes oh. to the house once or twice have a got, week. Have you got a house full of the children home from uni, or are they on half term? Oh, Tara, or? Tara got back from uh, oh. St. Petersburg on Thursday. Right. I I watched this program this week, um, this week and last week, called Freshers. Did you see it? Yes, I did. It was about... Um, can I take the spider off my head now, please? Yeah, you may take the spider off Thank your you. head. Oh, no, oh, hang on a minute. Off. No, the bald patch has reappeared. Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, do you think I should go out to this, like, at work with a spider? I think you should. You <laughs> get away with it for another week, anyway. <laughs> anyway, so this program... Um, it's about these, I think it was about five or six of them, uh, who start at university. Yes, I know. And you saw it, and mm -hmm. I, I thought it was really good. Do, do they actually do anything, though? Do they actually do anything at university? Well, you know, my, my second daughter has started at a university a few weeks ago, yeah. <clears throat> and I was watching Freshers thinking, oh my God, why hasn't she called me? Why hasn't she called me? Of course, yeah. Um, and then she called me at one o'clock, and I said, I just watched Freshers. You are coming home, young lady. <laughs> and she just said, Mom, what did you do on Freshers Week? And I was like, yeah, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> you can stay, you can stay. But, I mean, it's... Um, I think it's great that she did a gap year before she went. Yeah. Um, and travelled over through South America yeah. if she had gone straight from her mother's lovely little cottage up there and was getting up to shenanigans up there yes you know I wouldn't be able to sleep but now I'm like she's sensible <laughs> she's sensible and her friends have been posting pictures on Facebook yeah of some of their shenanigans but I have to say they post the early pictures when they're all dressed up to go out and I'm only allowed to like the picture I am not allowed. Oh no no no! Um, you mustn't comment. No no no. My otherwise, she will unfriend me. My nephew's uh, my nephew often threatens his uh, my sister with that. Yeah. yeah. You can like my my statuses. Don't put anything on my wall, mum. But strangely enough, I'm allowed to. I'm uh, allowed. Yeah, but that's to different. You're the uncle. That's because I'm cool. Because I am cool. No, it's because you're the uncle. I am cool <laughs> Uncle Chris, who's taking him on holiday. That's why. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course. I've booked all that this week. My, uh, I've done, it's all books now. I went into the... Um, first of all, I went online. Um, yeah. I was going to go with Virgin Atlantic. Yeah. Um, because I thought, you know, well, it's a package, big company. They're going to be the cheapest. No, not at all. No. No, not by far. Um, shop around. Yep. So then I, I went online and did flights and um, hotels separately. Yeah. Do you know how much cheaper that came out at? No. Two thousand pounds cheaper. Get away, Lone Polly. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned the brand. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's wow. and that's with the BA, you know, the nice seats in the plane. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Two thousand pounds cheaper. So armed, armed. Days. Armed with that information, I then went down Thomas Cook. Hello, da 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 da. Want to do this? This is when I want to go. This is how I'd like to do it, please. Um, this is what I can get on the internet. Can you beat that? And she did. Yeah. There and then. So she said, the only thing is you'll have to pay now. I said, there you go. Handed over my card. And that was that. All booked. That's flights, accommodation, uh, 
no car because I'm I'm really not confident driving in other countries. Um, so we'll just get the cabs and that, you know, and buses yeah. and things. And um, also, they do this like one for all ticket now, and that includes Disney, Universal, Legoland, uh-huh. and other stuff on there. I can't remember. What and that's so you pay one price here, and then that's it. So that's Ooh. all paid for. So all we need now is a little bit of spending money. Because he likes his fashions, you know, 16 years old. Oh, no, he wouldn't wear the T-shirts that I buy. Do you see what I mean? You know, the ones well, in... Sp- would. Sp- pardon? <laughs> pardon? I think he would. <laughs> <laughs> like the Sorry, ones in, in Sports Direct, because I'm quite, quite a fan oh, of the shopping in Sports I Direct. Have, I have a frequent flyer card for them. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, sir, have I? Just a minute. Yeah, but I, I don't buy clothes for me in there. Well, you, you know that. I got the silver one. The silver British Airways one. Thank you very much. And a Waitrose card. <laughs> so many cards. So, so many cards. So many cards. So little time. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I went, um, yeah, Mikey went back to school at the weekend, my son. Yeah. Back to boarding school. And he's going on a camping trip at the beginning of December where for to? the Duke of Edinburgh Awards scheme. And where's that to? Um, down to West Sussex. Okay. So in well, December camping. <laughs> Is that intense or in a big... Um... It's intense. It's very intense. Mm. That'd be cold. Bunches. That'd be cold. But I went, uh, you know, <sighs> went up in the loft, got down a tent, got down a sleeping bag, blah, 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 blah. I went into his wardrobe to sort out some clothes for him. <laughs> yeah. Now... He went back to school in September. There was nothing in his wardrobe that fits him. No, but they all grow, don't they? He's just kind of... How old is he? He's um, 15, nearly Oh, 15. Christ, it'll be another, another five years of growing yet. Yeah. You haven't finished paying out yet, lady. And then he goes to buy um, the, the hiking boots, yeah. the walking boots that they need. And <clears> they were like from £27 up to 300 And I said, well, here's the deal, Boyle. You're going to be wearing them for three days in December. Yeah. By the time you get to do the next expedition in July, you'll have grown out of them. I said, so spend no more than 40 quid. It's crazy. Right. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But well, anyway, I, very I, I, much w- looking forward to the new gig. Oh, yes. Just just on the subject of those boots, Mary, um, <clears throat> I bought some... Um, uh, I used to have DMs, Dr. Martin boots. Yeah. And to walk in. But... You must, you must make sure he wears them a couple of weeks before they oh, yeah. go away. Absolutely, yeah. and they get the blisters, double socks on there. Um, yeah, they're 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 fairly reasonably priced, I think. DMs. I and the thing is, from the thing is, you will not get wet feet if you've got those on. No, you don't. You won't and get wet feet. You won't slip or yeah. fall. Yeah. I mean, the last time I had cancer, I am. Um, you know me. I'm a bit of a diva with my high heels and all yeah. the rest. My mate made me buy a pair of Doc Martens, like long Doc Martens, yeah. because she was terrified I'd fall over in the snow and crack yeah. my head or whatever. Easily done. And, and I tell you what, are, if, you, if you've they got... They are still fantastic. Yeah, if you've got trainers, they're the worst things for going yeah. out in the snow. No, the Doc Martens have the grip, they're waterproof, and if you keep, you know, maintain them, they'll last you for 20 years oh, if yeah. your feet aren't growing. Easily. Very yeah. well. And they're not, as I say, I think I bought mine for about 60 quid. I don't think they're over, I think, I don't think they're overpriced at all. I don't think they're overpriced at all. And no. I just see, you know, the, the, the Doc Martin shop in Camden, um, just up from the station, yeah. and you'd see the tourists going in there queuing outside. I know the one. I know the shop, yeah. And seriously, it's so worth the money. Yeah. Oh, are we doing an advert for it? I was, uh, no, I was just going to say, last year I bought these new eco-vegan shoes, right? Well, you can't eat them, though. E- no. E- eco-vegan uh, boots, yeah. they were. And I must say that they're as well made as the Dr. Martins. They've got the tread on the bottom. Yeah. It's all plastic. And I wear them on the bike if, if it's raining outside. I d- it doesn't stop me cycling if it's raining. Yeah. I just put on my white, uh, wet stuff. Yeah, because it's not going to wreck your hair, is it? No. Well, I might do if I put the spider on. I don't want a spider getting wet. Here, do you think he's going to fall for this? Put that in the corner of his room. Uh, I won't put it, like, obviously out. i just put it sort of so there's a couple of legs out. And he'll go, what's that? And I'll go, what's what? I'll go over there. 
act like a, um, a, an umbrella, really. I've got to have the camera ready for that, haven't I? Yeah. And you're looking forward to our new Sunday starting uh, next week? Uh, the week after. Is it uh, the 17th? That's next week, yeah. is it? Is it's the it week, week after. Say it's the, what, the third, second or third. Oh, is it? Is it? Is the, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to last that long. I think I might have to take a trip to Borough or somewhere. On Monday? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see how I am. I'll see how I am, because there's nothing worse than that. Uh, a bald woman puking on an audience. Oh, well. I've got that wrong. I've been telling everyone it was next week. It's not. It's the 17th, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> you can bring it forward. God. God. Listen, I better run because I've got to cook lunch for Julian, uh, my ex-neighbour. Okay. Well, my ex-neighbour, the one who moved out last week. Enjoy week. your turkey, whatever it is, thing, turkey thing. No, we're having a tortilla. A what? peppers and potatoes and onion and mushroom. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, that does sound nice. Goodness. I've got some leftover chilli from yesterday. It'd be all right, heated up, yeah. wouldn't it, eh? You won't starve anyway. No, I, I don't think so. I've got enough to last around me for a few years, I think. <laughs> all <laughs> right, Darren, have a great show, a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for calling in, Mary. All right, God bless us, bye. Bye-bye, darling. There we are, Mary in Camden, who has become a regular caller-in type person. She has indeed. Uh, Marge says... Um, the picture on your calendar looks looks like you a bit. What, the Barry Manilow one? Do you think so, Marge? Oh, that is a wonderful thing to say to me. Do you mean age-wise or, or, or what, really? I don't know. <laughs> she says, the spider looks realistic. You must have huge spiders in the UK. No, not at all. No, not at all. We don't, we don't really have big spiders. I've seen big spiders in Australia. Massive spiders. I've actually got a couple on my face in my Facebook pictures somewhere. Um, but you, you, I think if you ever get a chance, Marge, look through my um, Australian pictures on my Facebook. My Facebook uh, username, by the way, is Chris Reardon UK. <clears throat> if you want to join us on there, okay? Chris Reardon UK is my uh, Facebook name. Also Twitter, and you can see the photos there. If you find the spiders, look for the. the there's a couple of Australian albums where I've been a few times to Australia now and you'll see them in there my darling all right um I've got some things flashing across the screen here. I'm not quite sure what's happening there we are um oh sh uh, Marge also says when you say holla in Spanish you don't say the h so it's hola ole do you do any Spanish at all no. I was interested in listening to um, <clears throat> Mary talking about her son going camping. And I was in the Scouts uh, for many years. First of all, I was a Cub Scout. I think it was about, must have been about eight, eight, or, no, let's six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I might have joined the Cubs at about eight years old and I went on to Scouts. And uh, I belonged to the first Roehampton Scout group. Uh, where we lived in Roehampton, which is uh, like a suburb of uh, south southwest London, and I had some wonderful holidays camping. I remember the first one at a place called Broadstone Warren, and we weren't in tents in this one. We were kind of in in a big big room, you know, one great big dormitory. <coughs> And there was a, a payphone there as well. And of course, you know, first first time away from home and that. And uh, I, I was on the payphone a lot to mum. It was only two pence a phone call then. A big, big phone box. It was like a portable thing that you'd push around on a trolley. Because there were no mobile phones then. And this, this thing would be there and you'd pick up the phone and dial the number. And then it'd go doot, doot, doot. And you have to push your money in this mechanical slot. And it would drop through and y y you'd get your phone call. It was very good. When it worked. A lot of the time you'd lose your money. Of course, years later, who would I be to know that I actually would go around and repair them as a job? As a job, these phones. I don't think many people use phone boxes anymore, do they? That sort of thing. Anyway, so all the kids would line up and we'd put our money in, talk to our mums and all that. Going outside and doing sort of some sort of handicraft during the daytime, then night time, and they would have hot, hot um, chocolate.
They would have hot chocolate before bedtime. And I hated hot chocolate. Always hated hot chocolate. It doesn't taste like chocolate at all to me. Or like, like a rather bitter thing. Or you put sugar in it and it's still vile stuff. Hot chocolate. Can't stand it. I do like a bar of chocolate. Don't get me wrong. You know, Cadbury's or, or Galaxy or something like that. But not hot chocolate. I, I really don't like hot chocolate. Not at all. Thank you very much. No. Um, so I would ask for a glass of water, I think. Terry H says, do you remember the pips on the phone? Yeah. They would go, doo, 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 and you put your money and it would go, clunk, 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 as this money went through the mechanical stuff inside the phone and you'd be connected. <clears throat> so that was that, that was the first ever camp in script. I, I wonder if that place is still there. Hang on a minute, let me have a look. Broadstone Warren. And the funny thing is, it wasn't particularly far away from my mum's house. It was only about 20 minutes away from home. Woodstone Warren. Camping. I'm sure that was the place. Aha! Oh, no, it's... that's no, Maybe it wasn't that one, then. Because that says it's in East Sussex. I'm sure the place we went down was down the M3 somewhere. Uh, sorry, down the, uh, down the A3, not far away. Yeah, Broadstone Warren Scout Site and Activity Centre. It's in Ashdown Forest in the north of Sussex. Um, it's still there. Oh, and they got the tuck shop. Picture of the tuck shop. Very, very important place in scout, pla in scout camps, the tuck shop. Where you get sweets and badges and and pen knives and all pens with with the name of the scout camp on the side of it. Very very important the put up shop and of course crisps and sweets and biscuits. Possibly the most important part of a scout camp is the tuck shop. Do you not think? Another place we used to go to was Buckmore Park. And uh, our scout leader, Ted Morden, his name was, wonderful man. Totally dedicated to, to his boys, really. He used to come and he'd bring his wife with him. And um, Buckmore Park is somewhere we went every year in February. My God, it was cold. There would be some, some years, there would be snow on the ground. And at this particular place, and again, we'd all be in a big hut. We didn't go in tents there. <clears throat> and there was no heating in this hut. None. And it was quite open. It's not like we were close together in one room. It was a big, big hut and the, the bunk beds all around it. I remember I would sleep one end of one. And usually next to me was my friend Philip. And Charlie would be on the bunk bed on top, I believe. And, um... Oh, it was so cold in there. And there, there, was, a, there was a hole in the roof. Not, not a hole where you could see, like, the stars. But a hole with, like, a top to it. So that you, you, the air would come in and out. It was so cold in there, it really was. And at this particular place, you could do go karting and ice skating, no, roller skating, and there was a swimming pool. There was loads to do. You did your cooking, uh, you could do outside, or in like a kitchen area, there would be a stove and things like that as well. It was all very, very rough and ready. And then during the summer, we would have our summer camp, which would be two weeks um, in various different places. We went to the highlands of Scotland. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning part of the world. Um, we went to uh, the Lake District, which was great. I always remember being in this canoe, trying to go around a very dangerous part of, of Lake Windermere. It was quite rough weather that day. These these lakes are very big, very, very big, and got very wet. And then going up walking on on some on the top of some mountain, knife knife's edge or something like that, I think it was called. And then I was picked in nineteen seventy six to go on a scout jamboree to America. 
And we went to New York, uh, Boston, and Maine. At a time I was quite homesick, I remember. Maine was the most amazing place ever. It was very wild. And we did 50 miles walking and canoeing in these beautiful lakes in Maine. And it was so hot. Oh my God, it was so hot the summer of 1976 there. I remember leaving like the main part of the, of, of, of the um, area, the scout area. <clears throat> and the lake was so high. And we went on our 50 mile walking and canoeing. And when we came back, we'd noticed the lake had dropped considerably, where, of course, the water has simply evaporated. And we had a guide with us, and he had this two-way radio. And he would radio in every night and tell everyone that we were OK. Who had a gun with him in case we were attacked by bears. Really, bears. And that was intense. That was intense. And we used to set up our tents near the water's edge. The only thing is, the trouble with these places is that the toilet facilities are never very good. You know, you're, you're out in the wild and basically it's a hole. And that's where you have to go. Oh, it's not my cup of tea at all, dear. I'd love to do that again, though. Get in a canoe and, and do those, those journeys that we used to do there. Absolutely wonderful time. Now that I think about it, wonderful time little tent next to the thing. Got another phone call uh, from Marge. Good morning, Marge. Good morning. Morning. Um, I'm having troubles here. Are you trouble? Well, my free. I'm hearing myself talk because of. Oh wait a minute. Have you still got the little um video flowing? Have you? No, something froze up here from Firefox. Okay, I think it's not doing it now. All right. Are you still there? Are you still there? I am here indeed. Good morning, Marge. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, I was trying to reopen my web browser. Yeah. Uh, and I uh, was telling you about this deal <clears throat> about the rats that they talking about. Uh, you're talking about your head, your hair. Right. Oh, the, the, the spider on my head. Yeah. Well, yeah. darn it. I was going to read it here. Um. Oh, it's freezing up again. Hang on. <laughs> Having a little technical difficulty. We, we can hear you okay, Marge. No, I mean, my computer just decided to freeze up. Oh, I is it? You can still hear me okay. I can hear you perfectly. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah they said something about successful hair transplanting in rats. I, I put a link there in your Facebook. You might want oh, to check right, it yes. out. It said, it said it was a hair's... Mm. Uh, oh, yes, I see it now. Away yes. from getting hair replacement or something, anyway. <laughs> successful Rad Radical new therapy to tackle baldness is just a hair's breath away after discovery. Yeah, that's it. Do you mean to say I can have spiky hair again, Marge? I'm so happy. I'm happy. <laughs> is that a rat hair? <laughs> <laughs> I bet this is going to cost a fortune, I'll tell you that now. Oh, I know it. Every time they come out with something new, do you notice it's always expensive? Remember the VCRs and stuff when they came out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Everything, when it's first made, you know, it comes out, it's mm. so expensive, you know. Uh, are you old enough to remember black and white TV? Yes. Yeah, I, <clears throat> and you got up and you walked across the room to change the three channels yes. that you had. <laughs> and you turned it on and it might, and it had come on within ten minutes. Oh, yeah. Because it, it had to warm it, up. It, yeah. And when you turn it off, you'd watch it slowly go away to a tunnel. <laughs> a little dot. Then, little yeah, dot. a little dot in the middle. And then it would have a ghost there. Yeah. It would ghost for about an hour. That's right. Know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like I remember a nuclear it well. fallout, you know. <laughs> I remember yeah. it well, Marge. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? cool. Well, we're, we're pretty well the same age, so I know what you yeah, mm -hmm. I figured you'd remember all that. But the VCRs, when they came out, I always died laughing because I'd run them fast forward, you know, watch a movie and fast yeah. forward. We'd sit there and watch a movie and just die. But, you know, it's funny how that uh, technology, of course, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid watching Star Trek, 
It was like I was born in the wrong century. Yes. I knew all this stuff was here. I mean, yeah. I was going to be here. I knew about computers. I, I said, I was just like waiting, you know. I knew this stuff was coming. Yeah. How about you? Did you, did you see I, that I, whenever you did? I, I wish I, 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 um, I'd like to see space travel. I don't think we're going to be here for that. Well, um, we're space traveling now. <coughs> it's, well, it's not. I think. Yeah, the, but not very far. We can't go very far. They they need to find something that makes things go much faster. You well, know, I don't think. I think faster. they're going to figure out how to do the wormhole effect. Yes. You know, yes. you don't have to travel. With, yes. With uh, speed, yeah. you're just going to be there. You yeah. know, all of a sudden, they already they already got uh, scientific studies on space. It's it's quite my. It's quite mind-boggling, some of it. For example, warp, when, when they talk about warp drive, is, yeah. is where you don't necessarily go faster. It's you bend space to get yeah, closer right. to you. And that's mind-boggling. I just cannot understand how that works. Well, you know, on Star Trek, they, they're talking about talking to uh, headquarters or whatever, yes. uh, Star, Star, Star Command, you know. Anyway, they're, they're in warp. Command. They're going faster than time. Well, if you did that, you'd be talking to the past. You, yes, wouldn't, you would. It yeah. would. They would go out of the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. and they couldn't talk to <laughs> to the to the home base. You know, if they're doing that, it would it wouldn't be logical. It wouldn't work that way. But you know, it's just a glitch of, of the science fiction yeah. genre. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said like the doctor's bed. You know, in Star Trek, I knew all that was going to happen. I, they've got them. They've got them now. You know, that said that you lay on this scan. We got the mobile phones, haven't we? We got the mobile yeah, phones. The, yeah, <coughs> flip top. I can, I can, I, my I can, cell phone you know, flips open. I've got you know? my, my little iPhone here. I can pick this up, you know, and call anyone in the world. Uh, anyone yeah. in the world. But of course, they've always got glitches. Now they got where you, you know you can get a radiation, my uh, tumors and stuff. If you, you know, they got a little bug you can set on your phone. It's supposed to help knock that <coughs> that radiation uh, from coming into your head or whatever. Mm. A little ladybug. You ever heard of that? It's I don't. Gonna... I don't really believe in that. I don't believe that that um, they 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 make things that could damage you like that. Well, they, I watched the deal. I don't know if you've seen it, where they had four or five cell phones in a circle, yeah. and they put, well, I think, an egg in the middle, and and they microwaved it. Yeah. Uh, right there. On, I saw, I don't know how that works, yeah. but yeah. I know I carry my cell phone in my right pocket of my right. pants. And now I have pain in my right hip all the time. And oh. I'm thinking, well, maybe it's that cell phone. Put it in the other <laughs> side and see if it goes. Yeah, I put it on the other side. At least I'll have even pain, you know. <laughs> even pain. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I don't want to limp on just one side and so I can limp on both sides. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, you're talking about, uh, you ever take, um, oh, how do I say this? Try to word it. Constructive criticism of your show? Not usually, no. In, you don't take cr- <laughs> constructive, <laughs> con- nice constructive criticism. I've mean. listened. I've listened to people before uh-huh. and um, taken their word, and uh-huh. it's and it's not, it, and it's actually not improved things. Oh well, if I don't know if they're improved, it's, maybe it's just an go on. What is it then? Get on with it. An observation since I've been watching your older videos <clears throat> and your oh, newer right, yeah. ones, what you have got progressively dark. Dark. <laughs> dark. <laughs> your videos, uh, but before were bright. The sunshine coming in the window, you know, and all the pretties behind. I love your decoration. I'm not being critical. I'm just saying your 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 background, your everything. Like right now, it's pretty dark. Well, I've got um, I've got a got a red, white, and blue things behind me there. It's, yeah, uh, no, I, I was it, it maybe not coming out right. It's okay. I just so think like you've got mature. And you've got you are more mature. Maybe that's because you're younger back then. I don't know. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> I don't know. It's not coming out what I meant, meant to say. It was yeah, just like it's got. I think you're right. It's got. I actually, it's small. I actually you're, you're, changed that um, background now and again. My favorite background because I'm in a different room. You know, was when yeah, I went into the big it, room it next looks door. Bigger. You know, it looks yes. like it's big. It's like I'm sitting in your your office in the older ones. It's, it's big and bright. Yes. And you, you look way back behind there yes. and see the door and all the goodies that you got. But now it's kind of like small. 
small cramps. That's right, yeah. When I was in the big room <laughs> and I had shelves behind me with little trinkets oh, on and a chair room. and plants and a little table lamp. Yeah, I liked yeah. that. I liked it, that. The problem is all the stuff is now in this room. Now, when I was oh. doing it in the other room, it wasn't live. Oh, it wasn't live, okay. so I could room. probably I, I quite easily um, set up again in the other room and do recorded shows. That wouldn't yeah. be too difficult. All I need to do well, is move the spare bed out of the way and move some stuff in there. But to do it live, I'd have to move all the computers and everything else in there, and that's a bit of a pain. Yeah, oh, no, I love all your videos. I didn't. I don't want yeah. you to think I'm criticizing. <clears throat> I just it's a little different because I kind of like the where you dri ride up on your it's like coming to your house you know yes. you ride up on your bicycle and you yeah. walk in the building that's right you yeah. come in there, it's like do you think, do you think I should do a new opening and closing video like I used to have that, that's neat because it's like I'm coming to see a friend you know this is more kind of formal and you know like be, you know, I'm, 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 okay. I will do okay, okay I will do some new opening and closing videos then I think there you go I like that I like the yeah. ones where it's like I've come to, come to visit my friend you know and had a cup of tea <laughs> yes I shall do that then the only thing Thank is I you. wish it was okay. a bit more I wish it was a bit more summary because there's not a lot out there to see now but we've got oh, the trees I know. and you you saw the ones with the cat following me in yeah, well, just like your video on the Facebook, oh, that just unnerved the heck out of me, but I enjoyed it to, to all, to, all to pieces. Was you driving down the road in that bus and stuff, you know, that's, it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm going for a ride with Chris and, and watching the video, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't go anywhere. I don't have any friends, you know, so it's all virtual for me. But that's kind of like realism, you know. It's like a real life deal. Okay, with, yes, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> what would you like, Marge, what, what do you think I should have behind me? Maybe a blue or... A red, what colour? Oh, what I'm is quite up happy. To you on that? Quite I happy. Kinda... Basically, um, the, the 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 black behind me is a curtain, okay? Uh -huh. And the reason that's there, um, apart from looking good, is it absorbs a lot of the echo in the room. Yeah. Because it's, well, it's, you know, it's much it's much bigger. Reflect. It's much bigger than what you can see. It goes right across the back room, and that absorbs the sound. But I could quite easily change that for a different colour. <clears throat> blue is blue is a healing color, you know. Yes, that's a healing color. Red is a hot, passionate color. Right. <laughs> Yellow is kind of like cowardly. <laughs> if you kind of talk, talk about emotional colors, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's whatever mood you want. And of course, the light reflection it's going to, you know, some yeah. uh, like black absorbs all all colors. You know, it, it absorbs light. So and then of course you're gonna have the white. It's gonna reflect the light. But That's right, uh, yeah, yeah. I like a like a, a, a of course me. I like purple. <laughs> I like purple. I like but purple. That, I like the color purple. You know, it's soft. I like a yeah, like. I a, like purple. Kind of a real real like. Uh, what what is that color? Not purple, but it's a light. Uh, lilac. 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 That's lilac. it. Lilac. lilac. I like that. Of course, that's a little wild. Or you can make a hippie pad. <laughs> a hippie pad. <laughs> a happy hippie What's that, pad. What's um, that? What is that, uh, uh, a pentagon? Something like a pentagon behind me. Would that be a good thing to have? A pentagon? Uh, a pentagon? That's the, that's the capital. <laughs> it's the what? Oh, You're talking about pentagram. <laughs> is it a pentagram? Pe uh, that's a star. The pentacle is a, is a star. Yeah. It's like, you know, that you draw. And the pentagram has a circle around it. Yeah. Now, many people misunderstand that symbol. Of course, the Satanists, they took that and turned it upside down. And what it represents is like the flash over everything. You know, the, right. yes, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. I'm number one. When you got it up, up, upright, a regular star, the top is spirit. And then, then you, got, you got earth, you got air, you got water and yeah. fire below. And, out, and it, But the spirit is on top, you know. So well, I think, all the elements yeah, is our think body, the quite, earth is our body, right the water, change, the air. You know. Quite right about changing the colour behind us here, though, I think, yes. That well, light, be, light, I quite like, like a green. Like, a green. Green? Well, that'd be, well, for winter time, you know, that's, that'd probably be better for the spring because, well, if you're going through winter, I would think like a softer, wintry colour. Yes. You know, because that gets us, it, it's a mood colour, <laughs> you know, for winter time, <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, However, you like winter. They actually but do. They actually do this green screen thing where you can put a green. Oh yeah! How you, you can, can do that? Get your green screen mm. and put put you a, a video of uh, outside your garden behind you in the 
in the studio. Oh, you're, to- <laughs> you're talking a lot of technical stuff now, Marge. It's much well, easier uh, to just sit never, here and you're switch never on. You're too old to learn. That's what life's for. No, is to I learn not. And- and challenge yourself, you yeah. know? <laughs> challenge it. Like, I challenge too much, I do. You know, if you're like me, you learn visual. I bet you are. Because yeah. if you've seen somebody do it and show you visually, you could probably do That's it That's exactly right, yeah. But sometimes, yeah. you know, you, you ask someone how to do something, and they sh- I'm sure that they make it sound complicated. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Well, there I was know. a bloke, I've read, bloke at one of the workplaces I, I work at once who used to do this all the time. You know, how do, how do you do this? Oh, leave it, I'll do it. And I'm sure they wouldn't show you so that you had to, you know, you, you had to keep asking them how it was done. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was never very good in school like that. I, I mean, as far as books... I've had somebody, well, I've taught a lot of people computers, you know, now they yeah. have me their book. I said, no, I don't need that, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I can I can really see this stuff in my head, you know, and, and oh, it yeah. takes me a few yeah. minutes. But I, I have retaught people that went to classes. I had an elderly gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he yeah. went to classes to learn, you know, to use his computer. And they had him do his shortcuts on the desktop, Oh, control, alt, delete, all blah, 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 you know. And all he wanted yeah. to do was sit down and scan photos and send to his family an, an email. That's all. He, and so we sat down and yeah. we learned that. That's what you he know, wanted we, to we, learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple. But every time I go to his house, he had billions of shortcuts on, or just tons of shortcuts on his desktop. Need, yeah. Desktop. I said, how, what? They were like, new shortcut, new shortcut, new shortcut. Said, how are you doing that? And I watched him. And, and when he put his mouse... When he would click it, he would scoot it forward. He'd hit right. it like he would, you know, scoot it across the desk. I, so I physically held his hand still to make him click the mouse because he would boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and he'd make a new shortcut. There is a lot of, lot of stuff on the computer that no one ever uses, you know, and you learn yeah. all this stuff and it's all, all too much really, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've, I've I've had a lot of people I've taught you know computers, and of course you get a you have to hold it in when you laugh yeah. like in itself. But I had a lady she 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 had her new computer and wanted me to help her you know yeah. use it, and I went over there and said I saw the mouse on the floor. I thought, what's well, it down there? And she thought you used it like the old treadmill, you know, treadle on your sewing machine, you know that well, with you, your foot with your, with your foot. <laughs> She had a, she had a, I had to help hold it in, though, because you don't want to laugh at something. I said, no, ma'am, it don't work down there. <laughs> well, I know some of the people that work at the computer help. Uh, I mean, they must hear some stories. Oh, you know. I have, too. And plus, like I said, I took I took my computer to a, a repair person one time because I was stumped, you yeah. know. Yeah. And all he did was defrag it. I said, that ain't, that ain't going to fix. Oh, yeah, yeah. And charged me $50. And I thought, after he'd already done it, you know, I mean, a lot I, of money. I had defrag. I said the darn thing was full was of it, virus. I don't remember now what it was. Just a defrag. It's defrag. What a cheek. <laughs> oh well, yeah. March. I'm gonna got a couple of emails to read out now. Nice to talk to you as always. Okay. Um, you have a great week. I I was an hour early and I fell back to sleep with your bumper music. Ah. <laughs> I thought yeah, I was going to yeah. sleep past the show. Yeah, your, <laughs> your clock changes, changes next week, doesn't it? Yeah, our time changes tomorrow anyway, so uh, talk to you later. Okay, Marge, great... nice to talk. Bye-bye. Bye. There we are in America. Your clocks change tomorrow. Do remember that, boys and girls, okay? Very important. I know there's some, <coughs> some of these uh, American people that watch are with us a little earlier today, so that's cool. couple of emails then. Uh, oh, no, no, I'll tell you what we'll first do. Let's do our, um, our weekly bit of audio from Cyber John, who sends this in this week. Let's see which pearls of wisdom he is wishing to talk about this oh, week. Oh, come on! Hi, Chris. This is going to be a multi-rant. You get three for the price of one this week. And it starts with the awful proliferation of gambling that has swept this country since legislation was softened some four years ago. What we have experienced is a cynical abundance of betting shops on the high street, online sites advertised on commercial radio with jazzy, fun-filled 30-second clips, or sponsor such shows as TalkSport and LBC, stations which I'm a great fan of. And worst of all, the machines by which you can throw away literally your weekly wage in a matter of minutes. A town in the north of England called Keithley is already poverty-stricken, with high unemployment. 
But what has happened is an explosion of shops with these super gambling machines, resplendent with glittering lights and jingles, which make the one-armed bandit look like an electronic Mother Teresa. To be facetious, they are the equivalent of crack cupboard chocolate beans, and the consequences have been a profusion of not many riches to rag stories of men, and it's usually men, who have stuck thousands into these machines and have ended up on the wrong side of the law, or imprisoned, or homeless because they always believed, like so many addicts, that they will have a lucky streak and get back everything and more that they put in. It amounts to the loss of their house, family and job in some circumstances. I watched my brother, some 20 years ago, win £100 in a slot machine. That same evening, he threw 400 quid back into it. But now, there are a few restrictions. The government, of course, have cited personal liberty to bankrupt ourselves as the only defence against the vast grievances of charities and church organisations who have said that this kind of public mugging is helping to destroy the big society that politicians have put their names to. Political hypocrites. In America, they have it right, and jailed two British subjects who tried to introduce online gambling there. Well done, the US. I salute you for having sense. Here's another one. Tom Clancy brought into fashion the thriller title. The Bourne identity was appropriate because A. It was about a guy called Bourne and B. It was about his identity. But my issue is the slurry of thriller writers joining the bandwagon who named their dull 100,000 word crimes a title that has nothing to do with the story. The Pelican Brief. Not one pair of pelicans or briefs. There is even a thriller name generator on the net. Here are some I produced. The Neutronium Anomaly. The Phantom Mosaic. And most intriguing of all, the Tango Criterion. Here's the last one. All of you out there, unless the person is close family, never, ever, ever lend anyone a fiver. Why? Well, you might see it again, but it could be weeks. And all that time, you get fascinated and focused on the erstwhile £5 note. It begins to cause you stress. You start to fantasise about breaking down their door and smashing their room to bits. To them, it doesn't matter. They don't get stressed out. I'll have it for you tomorrow becomes a repeated refrain, and slowly you are under the impression that they are doing you a favour. That every time you ask for it back, you are hassling them unnecessarily. You are now the villain of the piece. It's only a fiver. What are you worried about? No, it is my fiver. I was kind enough to give it to you when you were in need, and now you are slapping me in the face with it whilst retaining it. I once kicked in someone's door at university after I had requested the return of a rare Jethro Tull double album. They had laughed at me earlier in the day when I asked for it back. I found out it had been badly treated, but I was accused of being a nutter. Don't lend people money or stuff. My 12 string guitar came back scratched. My 200 quid came back as 100 quid plus a casserole dish. My Colt 45 air pistol never came back. My model of F4U Corsair fighter plane went the same way. My Faith No More CD was never seen again, along with a Bioshock 2 video game DVD and a nice glossy book about goth bands. Has it occurred to anyone that they might want to borrow something because they actually want to keep it? The crime to top it all is when people borrow your stuff and then lend it to someone else. People take stuff that is valuable or interesting from you and it leaves a psychic imprint that stays with you for all your life sometimes. That's why I can remember all of these erstwhile possessions. And to show for it, I have nothing borrowed or blue from anyone. Nothing. Because I never borrow stuff. Unless it is a good book from a library. If you have to lend things, then make sure you have collateral. For instance, I found a ram skull, and I stuck it on a stick, and I walked about the bars of the university campus when I was young, for God knows what reason, asking for a pint and a short for the thin guy. And a surrealist band member saw this, and wanted to use it in a show. I got a nice sword in exchange, and still have it. A fair swap. Now, I did get my fiver back, but now it is stuck in the back of the drawer, contaminated by lender angst. 
Oh. Happy belated Halloween. I walked around town in my old goth stuff looking like Gary Oldman on sanguineous steroids, and I received a very interesting bifurcation of appraisals. The ladies in their hired gear wanted to dance around with my antique silver-topped cane, and rather vocally made their approval known. The male students, in their rather crap fancy dress, well, they were rather quiet and subdued. I've seen a better zombie working in Poundland. Have a great weekend, a great everyone. Weekend, everyone. Well, I did get a bit, I did get a bit scared then, Cyber John, with that laugh at the end. As always. <clears throat> wonderful words of wisdom by Cyber John. Uh, Marge has just pointed out, have I still got a sore throat? Yes, it's just, it's, uh, the, the noise is not coming out again, Marge. It was fine last night. There was nothing wrong with my voice last night, but this morning it's gone again. So just one of those things. Yes, I've got a bit of a dodgy throat. Um, fruit machines, John. I, there was a period of time, I was about 20 or 21, where I kept going on them. And putting te was it 10p a go. There's like pound a go now, isn't it? It was 10p a go when I was using the fruit machines, and there was a little period where I kept putting money in, but I I stopped doing that eventually. So uh, watch out for the fruit machines. Uh, as as you were talking about, never lend people money. Absolutely, I totally agree with that. I've lent money to people before, and they will guarantee that they will pay you back. It doesn't come doesn't come back have you got a fiver Chris could you buy me a drink Chris I've run out of money I'll give it back to you next time it doesn't come back this hasn't happened on just one occasion many occasions um, and you're quite right you are made out to be the villain have you got my fiver I'll give it back to you when I've got it and they talk to you with absolute disdain. These are so-called friends. We're not friends. Acquaintances. And I learnt fairly quickly about this sort of thing. And I'm afraid um, I now lend no one anything. Very rare. Well, I, I will never, ever lend anyone any money at all. Never. No one. If my sister or her family asked to borrow something, that's her or any of her three children, then I would give it to them on the understanding that I don't expect it back. There you go. That's what you asked for. Okay, we'll pay you back. Doesn't matter. And they say, no, no, I want to pay it back. And I'll say, doesn't matter. If you want to pay it back, fine. But I don't want it back if you don't want to. That is the only people I would give money to now. I would never lend anyone anything. Because that is exactly what happens. And there are probably people listening to this show now. Who would actually pay me back. And I'm sorry that you are caught up in that. I'm afraid, I have to say, the majority, by far the majority of people do not pay it back. Or if you was to lend them a larger sum, perhaps, 50 pounds, you, you know, this week you get five pounds and you might get another pound that week and, and you lose track of it anyway. My advice to anyone listening to this, never lend anyone anything it doesn't come back and it's so annoying you you feel really hurt and it's often someone close a close friend it's horrible excuse me have you got my five pound oh you get it back when i can there's there's actually someone i know of who I've seen at quite a few of the places I work. And he comes up and talks to me. And once, only once, he 
he said, have you got any money on you? I haven't got any, I've come out without any money and I, I need to get a drink. And I was like, I'm really sorry, I don't lend money to anyone. Oh, you're not offended? No, not offended at all. I don't lend money to anyone and really that's it. Okay, thanks. They never asked again. At least not me. I mean, I'd love to name this person because it's wrong. As time's gone on, I've, I've realised that this particular person has, has borrowed money from other people. Small sums, large sums. But he doesn't pay them back. Now and again, he bumps into these people in places that I'm working. He's not a particularly old person. He's under 30. And... Somehow he gets out of it. You can see them asking for their money and he gets out. Oh, I'll give it back to your sons, I promise. And it doesn't come. How long do you think he can get away with that, I wonder? He, he, I, I just think one day he will lend from the wrong person. Let's just leave it at that. From the wrong person. And it's just so wrong. So wrong. And what really annoys me is when you see people who you know who have borrowed money and they're out somewhere. Well, shouldn't you be paying that money back rather than being out? Probably on someone else's money. And most of the stories they come out with are rubbish anyway. Trying to get the money out of you. It's all rubbish. How on earth do they get away with it? So there's my advice. Never ever uh, lend money to anyone, boys and girls. Okay? Nothing. Not even a pound. If you want to give someone a pound, then that's fine. But don't lend it. Because it's, not gonna, it's probably not going to come back. Totally. I'm so glad you brought that one up, John. And as for lending stuff, well, yeah, I've lent stuff. I've probably got stuff lent out somewhere that I can't even remember who, what it is or who it was lent to. <laughs> Never mind. Your thoughts on that, if you will. Uh, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Uh, finally today, I think we've come to... The, oh, just a minute. Have we got some uh, messages coming here? No. Okay. Finally, today we've got an email uh, from young James. Hello, James. Nice to hear from you. Hi, Chris. Hope you're okay. Hope the storms weren't too bad and you and Katie were safe in there, as there seemed to be a little bit of damage and injury in the storms. But the storm didn't seem to have as much as an impact as the one in 1988. Yes, we had a storm here on Sunday last week. Yes, Sunday night going into Monday. And um, very high winds. Uh, in all honesty, certainly around here, I'm surrounded by very tall pine trees. And you would think that um, a lot of damage would be done to those in the storms, but there wasn't. Not a single tree had been blown down here. So, which is good news because when the next storm comes, if you know, whenever that is, I'm fairly confident that nothing's going to be blown down this next time. If it didn't happen this time, and that was quite a powerful storm we had here, I think winds of about 90 mile an hour, gusting at 90 mile an hour, um, something like that. So, yeah, we were, we were quite lucky there. You were also talking about video podcasts being expensive, which is a real shame as there are a lot of good pod podcasters for yourself. Um, yes, the... We, this, this show used to be available as video on iTunes, uh, but it isn't anymore, I'm afraid. You can still get the audio version on iTunes. Just type in United Kingdom Talk. The video version no longer available on iTunes, only on YouTube and Daily Motion. OK, uh, and it's uh, you can subscribe on the YouTube channel as well. My YouTube channel is Chris Reardon UK. Just hit the subscribe there. And there's a little drop down box which says um, email me when there is a new show out and you can you can do it like that. OK, but uh, you can't now subscribe to this show on iTunes. Uh, podcast hosting is relatively cheap if it's audio, if it's video, it's quite expensive because obviously the video sizes are quite large. The video size of this particular show is usually around about a gig. 
So that's a gig. That, that, that is quite large. I'll have another look around, but I don't think I'm going to find anything that's uh, uh, really affordable. As for the cooking, I hope you do some more cooking. I remember the last one you did with your friend Simon last year, and Katie tried to sit in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah, we did a cookery show. The only thing is, as I was saying to Marge, um, to do anything out of the studio, where I am now, you can't do it live. It's, it's not really possible to do it live. Um, it would involve lots of gear and stuff and, you know, moving around the place. It's just not really possible. I can do recorded cookery shows or, or, or anything else in other rooms or even maybe um, recorded um, insects or what would you call them in America? Segments. So I could be chatting like this. Here's something I did earlier. Push a button and a film of something earlier would come up. So there we are. Anyway, I'm going to go now. I'm going to have a look at uh, for some more um, background material. I, I do actually quite agree with Marge. It is a little bit dark behind me. I did like it when I had the shelves up in the other room with all bits and pieces and a table lamp and table and things like that. But doing it live, uh, that is possible, but an awful lot of effort to move everything. All the computers, because there's a lot in this room, all the computers from this room into that room and then the lights and all that business. So it's, that's a little bit of a no-no, that is. Thanks so much for watching and listening to the show today. Don't forget, you can always join in on the email, boys and girls. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you next Saturday at uh, 12 o'clock UK time. And if you want to watch a show live and you've been watching a recording, you can simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and at the top there is a link to the live shows. Just click on there on Saturday afternoons at 12 o'clock uh, GMT, 12 o'clock UK time, and uh, you can join us live. All right, see you next week. Have a nice week. Bye-bye. <laughs>